do one more for Chinese New Year. Chap chapter 31 The Futal Reliance by Judah or Israel upon Egypt. Same thing. So we find Egypt ruined, Israel rescued, Assyria routed. It's a very, very short chapter. We should be able to finish it. So, woe to those who reject God's help. Verse 1. Woe. This is the fifth woe. The fifth woe. When we started chapter 28, I told you there were five woes. Was it six? Anyway. So, this is the fifth woe. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help. Go down to the world, turn to the world for help and rely on horses who trust in chariots because there are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But do not look to the Lord, no, but do not look to the Holy One of Israel nor seek the Lord. So, Again, it is repetitive. Why? Because in the earlier earlier chapter, we already learned that God is saying, don't turn to Egypt. But the, 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 the way of learning is repetition. The more we repeat, the more we will learn. Right? So the, the people of Israel are quite deaf. God needs to repeat, repeat, repeat. Okay, so, which... Which reference in some is the one don't trust on some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. Someone. Twenty verse seven. Okay. Someone was asking me last Sunday after the service, hey, how you memorize all these uh, verses? Um, I, I don't wake up one morning and everything on drop. You understand? <laughs> nothing in, nothing out. So you take time to go and read and study. The the, the scripture will be there uh, in you and then when you need it the Holy Spirit will guide you okay so I said you're going to try a few like this Sunday I test you she's siam or she's right <laughs> okay Psalm 147 I'll show you another one Psalm 147 verse 10 Psalm 147 verse 10 verse 10 and verse 11 so besides Psalm 20 verse 7, you can also look at this. Psalm 147 verse 10. He does not delight in the strength of the horse. He takes no pleasure in the legs of a man. But just now they say, oh, because the horses are strong, the horsemen are so strong. God is saying, don't trust in the horses and don't trust in the man, he takes no pleasure in the legs of the man. Maybe he, he is using both, can run in 9.6 seconds, but God said, don't trust in him. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his mercy. Very similar to Psalm 20 verse 7, right? Who trust in the name of the Lord. Okay, so, back to chapter 31 verse 2. Yet, he also is wise and will bring disaster and will not call back his words but will arise against the house of evil doers and against the help of those who work iniquity. So God's word against those evil doers, they will not be thwarted. They will not change course. God sent forth this and it will do and accomplish what he has intended it to do. Okay, this evil doers will be destroyed. I like verse 30, verse 3. Now the Egyptians, the Egyptians are men and not God. Wow. God needs to tell the people of Judah, hey, wake up, wake up. The, the Egyptians are not God, they are men. I am God, you understand? The people are so, uh, 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 
I won't say lost, uh, but they are so blinded uh, that they turn to Egypt as if they have supernatural power. The Egyptians are men and not God, and their horses are flesh and not spirit. If I have the power of the Holy Spirit, I don't need the power of the horse. Right? When the Lord stretches his hand, both he who helps will fall, and he who is helped will fall down. They will they all will perish together. When the Lord stretches his hand, how do you stretch your hand? Oh right? Just stretch up. Not even beating you know, or swinging your hand. God just stretch his hand. Those, both he who help, who, who, who is supposed to help? Egypt. Egypt is supposed to help. Egypt will fall. And then, and he who is helped, who is being helped? Judah. Both will fall together. And all God needs to do is just stretch his hand. So, who would you trust? Put your trust in the name of the Lord. And eventually, he, uh, Judah also fell. But not to the Syrians. They fell to who? The Babylonians. And that was 100 years later. After this word was spoken, they still remained disobedient and they fell to the Babylonians eventually. And they, will, they all will perish together. So, that is Egypt ruin. Now, now we see Israel rescue. For thus the Lord has spoken to me, to Isaiah, as a lion roars, and a young lion over his prey. When a multitude of shepherds is summoned against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor be disturbed by their noise. So the Lord of hosts will come down to fight for Mount Zion and for its hill. Uh, this one needs a bit of uh, explanation. Otherwise you read about lion or young lion and who is coming down for who. Okay. The lion roars. This lion is the Assyrians. The Assyrians are coming down. They are threatening Judah. So they roar. When the lion roars, you get scared, right? So as the Assyrian roar, and a long, young lion, well, the Assyrians, they also were young people, young troopers. So, not, not the old one, just a young lion uh, over his prey. That means they, they are intimidating. They are intimidating the people of Judah. And as a young lion over his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is summoned against him, well, if you are the shepherd and you see there's a lion, a young lion, captured one of your sheep, pray, pray. Then as a shepherd, what do you do? You you will uh, you know take stick la, you know take stone uh, whatever, summon against this young lion. But this young lion will chop. You understand? Because you are powerless. I, the Assyrian, I have captured, in fact, they have captured all the cities, villages around Jerusalem. Only Jerusalem, they haven't gone in yet. So you are trying to call them and chase them away. But the young lion over the prey ignore them. He will not be afraid of their voice, nor be disturbed by their noise. They take stone, take them, symbol and so on. want to chase the lion away. But the lion with the prey will not budge. Then, that means how? The prey will die. Then only, the only help then that will come will be from where? From upstairs. From God. Now you read, So, because the prey is helpless, Judah is helpless, the lion is roaring against them. So, the Lord of hosts will come down and to fight for Mount Zion, Jerusalem, and for its hill. You follow? Now you read the, the, the thing, you get the picture. 
because they are helpless. So they need to depend on God. So like just now I mentioned, 185,000 in one night. If they really chong, uh, boom, the whole world will come down. What's the problem? 185,000 go in, definitely Jerusalem will fall to Assyria. But God using one angel and they were all destroyed. And God went on further to say, like birds flying above, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Now when the birds fly, this is their nest, and that's the egg. They fly, hovering, they protect. You try and go to the nest, you know, when you try and climb the tree and go to the nest, and steal the egg and the eagle, the bird will come after you, right? <coughs> so the picture is as like birds are flying about, hovering over the nest. God is hovering over Judah. God is watching over his people. So will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem? Defending, defending, he will also deliver it. Passing over, he will preserve it. And that's why, until today, Israel still exists. But if you count by numbers and numerically, the surrounding nations are against Israel of what, 7, 8 million, 6, 7, 8 million. They are outnumbered. But God is flying over them. God is defending them. God, as He passes by, He is preserving them. So we look at Romans 8 verse 37. Romans 8 37. Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loves us. We are more than conquerors through Him who loves us. Did we conquer? No. Jesus conquered death. We did. But we are more than conquerors through Him. Now we do not fear death. Because you know why? Jesus overcame death, the last enemy. And so we are more than conquerors, victorious over the situation. Okay. Through Him, only need to be through Him. Not through Him, doesn't, doesn't come. But through Him, who love us. Back to Isaiah 31, verse 6. This is still in the second part. Israel rescued verses 4 to 7. Return to Him. Same message. God only wants your repentance, wants our repentance, wants us to return to Him. Return to Him against whom the children of, of Israel have deeply revolted. You have rebelled. You have revolted against God. Now return to Him. For in that day, in that day, every man shall throw away his idols of silver and his idols of gold. Sin, which your own hands have made for yourselves. Then in verse 8, Assyria routed. So God will destroy Assyria. Not man. Then Assyria shall fall by a sword, not of man. And a sword, not of mankind, shall devour him. But he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall become forced labor. The first part, the Assyria, then Assyria shall fall by the sword, by a sword, not of man. And the sword, not of mankind, shall devour him. He was an angel, right? Second uh, Matthew, Second Samuel 19, verse 35. It was an angel, not of man. The 185,000 died. But he shall flee from the sword. Now this also means the evil one. 
the devil. Flee from the sword. This sword is a picture of the Word of God. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. You remember in Matthew chapter 4, whenever the devil tempted Jesus, Jesus spoke to the devil. It is written. It is written. Okay? So that is also the sword of the Spirit. But he shall flee from the sword. And his young men shall become forced labor. Okay, all these Assyrians, they will become laborers, slaves. Verse 9, He shall cross over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the banner. He shall return. The king of Assyria shall return to his own homeland, but he shall return with the tail between his legs, he shall do so with fear. And his princes, his officers, shall be afraid of the banner. Says the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and whose furnace is in Jerusalem. Last week I mentioned Jehovah Nisi, his banner over us is love. His banner over Jerusalem, over Mount Zion. The enemies are afraid because that is his territory. And they shall return to their place in fear. Whose fire is in Zion, the fire of God. When they step into Jerusalem, the enemies, they are stepping into the furnace of God. And when you step into the furnace of God, you will experience the wrath of God. You will not touch his people. But if you do, you will be burnt. That's what he says. Okay, whose fire is in Zion, whose furnace, the hottest part in the fire, I mean the, the, where the fire is, is in Jerusalem. So, that will be the fate of the Assyrian king. You can go back, you can read Second Samuel chapter 19, verse 35. And that section. Okay. Eventually, after the Syrian king went back to Assyria, who killed him? His sons. His sons. Because you know why? The father brought embarrassment and shame to them. His own children will kill him. Okay. No good end for them. So, Father, we learned even this morning that our reliance is upon you. That we need not have alliance with any other man, but just to rely upon you. Lord, I pray that all the days of our life we shall remain obedient. Even as we wait on you, we wait for you, we pray that in the interim our focus is on you and even upon your word. And as we do, I ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to guide us not to turn to the left, not to the right, but to continue in the path of holiness as the highway leads to you. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs>